then we'll study about demon uh, demonetization and gst this is very important there are high chances we'll be getting question from here because this is the addition right so this is what so first of all you will write chapter number 3 economic reform and these things that okay in this chapter we are going to study this then we'll start with the chapter clear yeah
Ben. Çok yer. Just a minute. Okay, so just give me one minute, Halima, and I'll stop. Okay, now our next chapter is this, economic reforms since 1991. In the last chapter, we discussed that whatever reforms, you know, was what people were criticizing it, whether it was green revolution, whether it was IPR, uh, okay, the licensing one and all that, people were basically drawbacking it, drawbacking in the sense like criticizing it, right? So that's why the, they demanded that we need some extra good reform, we need you know uh, some other reform so after before 1991 we already discussed so economic reform since 1991 after 1991 what happened so since independence india followed the mixed economy you already know this, right so india was following there are three types of economy because india is following mixed economy framework by combining the advantage of capitalist economic system with those of the socialist economic system so india is following mixed economy mixing both the things India, which stated, which started its development path from near stagnation, has since been able to achieve growth in savings, developed a diversified industrial sector which produced a variety of goods, and has experienced sustained expansion of agriculture output, which has ensured food security. So basically, slowly and slowly, India is developing. Right, but on the other hand, some scholar argue that over the years, this policy resulted in the establishment of variety of rules and laws, which were aimed at controlling and regulating the economy, ended up instead hampering the process of growth and development. So you already know whether India was growing or not, but we made various law like licensing one that if you want to expand this, you have to take license. So we government made lot many policies. Right. So because of this, what happened? It hampered. Hampered means it stopped the progress and the growth of and development of the country. So in 1991, India met with the economic crisis. So 1991 economic crisis means there was no development in the economy. And that is known as economic crisis. So in 1991, India met with the economic crisis relating to the external debt. So external debt is basically debt is basically the loan. So now if you are facing crisis, then of course you have to take loan from somebody else. So in 1991, India met with the economic crisis, resulting in its external debt. The government was not able not able to make a repayment on its borrowing from abroad. So ab up now, India is facing issues. So what India did? India borrowed money from abroad. Okay, but now see once you borrowed money, for example, I borrowed hundred rupees from you, but now you have to repay that thing, right? But now India was not able to repay the things. Foreign exchange reserve, which was generally maintained to import petrol and other important items, dropped the level that were not sufficient for even the fortnight. So there was a situation in India that even for one night, they don't have enough money to survive, right? So the crisis was further compounded by rising prices of essential goods. Now what happened when you don't have material with the things, the prices will increase. And when prices increase, it makes the situation even worse. So all this led the government to introduce new set of policy measures which damaged the direction, which changed the direction of the development strategies. So basically because of this, government of India was forced to make development strategies to change the policies. 
clear so basically india fought uh, india you know uh, faced a lot of difficulty and there was not even like they don't have much material or much resources to even sustain our night so for example you are studying right and you are you are not getting good grades so what you will do you will change your strategy right so similarly if india was india was not getting good result from the policies india was following so india decided that now we will change the policies clear yes ma'am okay now the first question is this is the first question so of course the chapter is economic reform the question is why were economic reform introduced right so the thing is the government was not able to generate sufficient revenue from internal source of taxation right the income from public sector undertaking psus was also not very high okay so the first is whatever a government was not able to make money right government from where government get money from taxation or the revenue right but with the help of these two government was not able to generate good income that's why Uh, uh, Indian economy was facing crisis, and now if you don't have much money, you will be taking it from abroad. You will be taking it from some else, uh, somebody else, like from foreign countries. So first reason is government was not able to generate sufficient revenue for internal source such as taxation. Second, the income of public sector undertaking was not very high. Public sector, you already know, government sector. So basically, whatever government sector was running, hospitals, schools, and all that, their income was not enough. Clear? Yeah? even though the revenue was very low the government had to spend more um, more to meet challenges like unemployment poverty and population explosion the government was also spending a large share of its income on area which do not provide immediate returns such as social sector and the national defense so basically what was government doing government was not earning much but still the government was spending large share large share means if whatever government was earning right Out of that, government spending a large share. For example, government is earning hundred rupees. So out of hundred rupees, seventy rupees government was spending on social sector and national defence. Defence means army and all that. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So why uh, economic reform introduced first? The government was not able to generate sufficient revenue from internal source of such as taxation. Second, the income of public sector undertaking was not very high. Third. the government was also spending a large share of its income on areas which do not provide immediate returns such as social sector and national right and next at times our foreign exchange borrow uh, our foreign exchange borrowed from other countries and international financial institution was spent on meeting consumption need right in the late 90s the government expenditure began to exceed its revenue by such margin that meeting the expenditure through borrowing become unsustainable okay now next thing what happened in 1980s what happened a government expenditure begin to exceed the revenue revenue means whatever money you are getting and expenditure means whenever money you are spending right so government expenditure increased but revenue remain same right for example your salary is 20 rupees and you are spending 30 rupees so it's a negative thing this 10 rupees extra you will take it from somebody else right so this is this was the third problem next prices of many essential good rose sharply import grew at very high rate without match growth of export so import increased import means now we are taking things from other countries right but export remains same next foreign exchange is a reclined at the level that there was no adequate finance import more than two weeks right there was not sufficient for to pay the interest to be international lender also no country or international funders willing to lend next is no country or international funder was willing to wait clear yes okay so now we are again going to discuss it why economic reform introduced first the government was not able to generate sufficient revenue and internal source such as taxation second the income from public sector was not good next the government was spending large share of its income on the areas such as social sector and national defense next in 1980s government expenditure became to exceed the revenue like its expenditure became more and the revenue became less and uh, it was that much like low that it was not even like you were not able to meet it by taking loans as well next other thing prices of many essential goods rose sharply right import grew at very high rates without matching its export next you can make it one and next 
Foreign exchange reserve declined at the level that there was not adequate finance import for more than two weeks. Next, no country or international funder was willing to lend India. Clear? Yes. Okay. So you will first write why were economic reform introduced and all this point. Clear? Just write in points. So many points. Yes, you can make it make it a point because it will be easy for you to learn in points. I think. If you feel like that paragraph is okay, then you can go for paragraph.
question. Okay. Now, next thing is that now India was facing issues, right? So how India dealt with that? Okay, now you already know India is facing the issues, right? So now how India dealt with that? First, India approached the IB, International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, okay? Popularly known as World Bank. So from here, you can get one marker question as well, the first full form and second, World Bank is also known as or International Bank for Reconstruction and Development is also known as World Bank and IMF, okay? It's a, it has two names, okay? So basically what India did, India approached this institution and received $7 billion as loan to manage crisis, okay? For availing the loan, these international agencies expected India to liberalize and open up the economy by removing restrictions on the private sector, reduce the role of government in many areas and remove trade restriction between India and other countries. India agreed to the condition of World Bank and IMF and announced new economic policies in 1991. The NEP consisted of wide ranging economic reforms. So question was, why were economic reform introduced? So basically this was the reason. Okay, and after that, what happened basically at last, these were the problem India was facing, right? At last, what happened? India approached, approached the, them, okay, and they gave them this dollar. And in return, they told India that, okay, we are giving you the loan, but we want few things from our, your end. First, to liberate open economy, remove the restriction from private sector. You already know there were lots of restriction, right? Licensing and all that. And then they told to reduce the role of government in many areas and remove trade restriction between India and other countries. That's why they told that we will only give you loan when you are going to follow all this thing. So India agreed that, okay, okay, I will be introducing new economic policy in 1991. And in this new economic policy, there were lots of reform. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you will not write anything. Um, you will write. After this, you'll just leave one line and after that, you will write this paragraph. Clear? Full paragraph for under what heading? No, nothing. Just uh, till here points and after that, leave one line and just write this. Okay? So oh, it's continuation. Yeah. Got it. It's the conclusion, basically. That, okay, these were the problem and because of this, India needed some solutions. She, uh, India yes, went so there India and... Yeah. three three solutions. Same
Jalan. Okay. Now, next thing we are going to do, uh, do is uh, the set of policies can be broadly classified into two groups to stabilize measure and to st structure reform measure. Now, basically what happened, we already discussed this that, okay, uh, you know, now India is going to adopt the new economic policy, right? So, the policies which is, which India is going to follow, they are basically divided into two ones. First, stabilization measure and second is structural reform. So, two types of policies India adopted, one and two. So, what is stabilization measure? Stabilization measure are short-term measures intended to correct the balance of payment position and to bring inflation under control. Inflation, you already know high prices. We already discussed here that prices were really high, right? So, first was you have to make stable. For example, you are in very poor condition. Right. So, first of all, my main motive is to make you stable, right? And after that, whatever the requirement are there, I'll be putting it to you, right? So, first stabilization measures are short-term measures intended to correct the balance of payment position and bring inflation under control, okay? In simple word, you can say stabilization measure aimed at maintaining sufficient foreign exchange reserve and keeping the rising price under control, okay? Once this is done, now, structure. We will be focusing on the structure. Structure policies are long-term measures aimed at improving the efficiency of the economy and increasing the international competitive, uh, com competitiveness by removing the rigidities, uh, rigidities in various segments of Indian economy. This include liberalization, privatization, and globalization. Clear? So basically, now India and I agreed that, okay, we'll be adopting new economic policy. So these policy are classified into two parts. First, stabilization measure, which are basically short term. And next is structural reform, which are long term, which aim at to, you know, increasing the international compet uh, uh, like the competitions and removing the rigidness. Re removing the rigidness means earlier we had like, okay, private sector are control of public sectors. You cannot do this. You have to take license for this, like that. Okay. So now liberalization is basically set them free. Okay. Liberal matlab set free. And privatization is basically uh, instead of government control, you have to give control to the private sector. And globalization, you are not going to work inside the economy only, inside India only. You are going to deal with other countries as well. That is global, all over the world. Clear? Yes. So you will write a hashtag uh, policies uh, adopted by India. Okay. First, you will write hashtag policies adopted by India. Okay, hashtag policy. Or you can write classification of classification of policies adopted by India. Okay, and after that, first, second. Or you can write the set of policies can broadly be classified into two groups. And then first, second. In stabilization, there are two. One is the first one, another one is in simple words. Yeah, just write till here. Okay, and second one? Second one, you have to write everything. Okay.
then ma'am. Okay. Now we are basically going to do reform policies like liberalization, privatization, and globalization. Clear? So first we'll discuss what is liberalization. So then what is liberalization? Liberalization means freeing the Indian business and industries from unnecessary control and restriction. Okay, so unnecessary control, like I'm going to make you liberal. Liberal means freedom. Okay, no restriction. Liberalization means no restriction. Okay, so liberalization was introduced to put an end to these control and restriction and open various sector of an economy. Though a few liberalization measures were introduced in 1980s in area of industrial and Industrial licensing, export import policy, technology upgradation, fiscal policy, and foreign investment reform policy initiated in 1991 were more comprehensive, covering some important areas such as industrial sectors, financial sectors, tax reform, foreign exchange market, and trade investment sector. So, basically, what happened when the liberalization was introduced, right? So, earlier uh, it focused on licensing, it made licensing liberal, export import, technology fiscal policy and foreign investment okay but after 1991 what happened basically they uh, in apart from these sector they uh, like they liberal they made liberal the sector industrial sector they made liberal financial sector they made liberal tax reform they made liberal foreign exchange market investment sector earlier only few sectors were liberal right but after uh, you know, reform policies initiated in 1991 were more comprehensive, covering some important areas. So they were more comprehensive. Clear? Yes. So first of all, what you will write? You will write hashtag liberalization. Then you will write liberalization means freeing the Indian business and industry from unnecessary control and restriction. Okay? And then you will write and open various sectors of the economy. Last one. Done. Now, basically, liberalization. Uh, liberalization happened in uh, different sectors. So, first, what happened under liberalization? First is deregulation of industrial sector. Okay. So, prior to reform in India, in India, regulatory mechanism were imposed in various ways. Okay. So, what happened? See, remember one thing: we are going to do few things. Liberalization. First, we are going to focus on this industrial sector okay after that we will focus on financial sector after that we will focus on tax reform all that okay so what we will discuss over here first we will discuss what happened before okay like what was the situation before and after that when reform were introduced what happened after that okay so before situation is very much important because if you are not aware of the problems then how you will give the solutions right so First, degradation of industrial sector. So, what prior reform means, like before, prior means before reform, when reform were introduced, what was the condition? So, industrial licensing under which every entrepreneur had to take permission from government officials to start a firm, 
close a firm or decide the amount of goods that can be produced so what was the uh, you know what was the uh, you can say condition of industrial sector it was industrial licensing was there whatever you have to do with your industry you have to take permission from government sector okay second private sector was not allowed in many industry there were few industries where private sector was not allowed that were only controlled by the government sector third some goods could only be produced only in small scale industry we discussed this that small uh, few goods were reserved for small scale industry right that these people buy just to boost their confidence that these are the product which only small scale industries will be producing next control on price fixation and distribution of certain industry products so this was also like price fixation was the distribution of certain perform there the reform of 1990 remove many of these restrictions so now we are talking about the condition so first was industrial licensing under which every entrepreneur had to take permission from government official to start a firm close a firm and to decide the amount of good that can be produced so first this was the condition second private sector was not allowed in various industries and third so some goods could be produced only in small scale industries and next control on price fixation and distribution of sector so these were these were the basically problem in industrial sector and after that we will discuss like how we remove this problem and how we sorted out these problems so first you will write first deregulation of industrial sector then you will write hashtag prior to reforms okay prior to reform just write it and then first second third fourth okay